outdated car terms that we rarely use. As time passes, the way we speak will fall in and out of fashion. Certain terms and phrases are timeless, but we're not here to discuss those. Rather, let's have some fun looking at the outdated ones. Tricked out. This used to refer to modded or tuned cars. It was a reference to more flashy modification styles. It's really funny to hear out-of-touch young news anchors still use this term because you probably know their script writer is well over 50. Usually whenever MSNBC, CNN, or whatnot does a news story on cars, be it a car chase or a modded car show, you'll have them throw this term out left and right everywhere. They'll just be... I have 706 horsepower. 706 horsepower, and this is all tricked out. Some of the, they, some of the, the rims are kind of graphite rims, is that correct? Right, carbon fiber... And it carries the same energy as a 90s Sonic cartoon. It's just hilariously outdated and out of touch, and I may have promised to stop making fun of non-car guys, but it doesn't change the fact I still find the things they say absolutely ridiculous. This term has many various successors, none of which are ever probably going to become outdated, due to the fact of how literal they are, which is tuner, modded, and built. Can you guess what those three terms refer to? That's right, they're really straightforward. They refer to modded, built, or tuned cars. A common theme that you're going to see in this video is that modern car culture has become a lot more straight cut and how they will simplify old flashy terms into really easy to grasp literal versions. Souped up. Some people use this interchangeably with tricked down, but it seems that it was more reserved for sleepers, so you were basically souping up a car to be fast, where tricking out a car sounds flashy and loud, souping up a car was more unexpected. Now, to be fair, sleeper in itself may become an outdated term too, as that one originates from the fact that you shouldn't sleep on them because they're secretly a fast car, hence they're sleepers. That'd be a reference to old sleeper agents because again, it's something that's unexpected, that's what being asleep usually means. Only time will tell if sleeper has its successors, as it is the current successor to souped up. Hot Rod. Shout out to Tyler Hoovy in the legendary meme where he got a news reporter lady to call his stolen Mercedes SUV a hot rod on live television. Spoiler alert, that's not a hot rod. A hot rod is a classification of old sports cars way back when, and I'm talking about a time that predated big block muscle culture. And hot rods, well, they still exist, and the term is still around today. Honestly, we don't use it as much, not because it's out of fashion per se or that it's it's more so that the vehicles themselves are slowly dwindling to put it in short the term hot rod isn't going out of fashion because it's a bad term rather it's just that the literal vehicles it's referring to are just less common and that's not because those vehicles are uncool by any means it's just because they're a century old now with each passing decade hot rods will continue to dwindle further and further due to the difficulty of maintaining them However, their future isn't all bleak, as hot rod kit cars are becoming increasingly popular. I hope to see this word make its way back into our main vocabulary in the coming decades as people regain interest in the hot rods of yesteryear, either by rebuilding old ones, maintaining current ones, or assembling brand new kits. Rice Burner while this term sounds similar to ricer, it's not interchangeable with it. The term rice burner was a rather pejorative term used in different times, dare I say. It grew to popularity in the 50s and lasted all the way until the mid-70s. The term itself was simply used to describe any Japanese car. The insult stemmed from the fact that most Japanese cars featured smaller engines with lots of sound deadening compared to big rumbly American muscle or exotic European engines. This excessive sound deadening combined with the tiny engine made it sound like a rice cooker, or as we better describe it today, the beehive sound, or the shaking a can of beans sound. It was rather tragic. The term did start to fall in popularity as the oil crisis of the 70s started to settle in, and that's just because the oil crisis found themselves giving up their big block engines for tiny fuel efficient Japanese ones. The cars that they once laughed at ended up in their garage, and with that realization they started to hold their tongue and hammer this term out of existence before it could be used against them. Ricer, on the other hand, rose to popularity in its steed, starting in the 80s and coming to prominence in the 90s and lasting even to this day. Now, Ricer has a far more benign meaning. Ricer is simply an acronym that is a play on the word racer, but instead means race-inspired cosmetic enhancement. 
So basically cars that featured excessive race car features without an actual necessity for it. This was not limited to any specific type of car from certain brands, nationalities, etc. Also the driver of the vehicle had nothing to do with it. So even a Chevy Cavalier or BMW 335i, if modded poorly enough, could be called a ricer. An example of ricer mods would be a stupidly massive wing on a car that never sees a track, or extremely wide tires and tons of camber for the sake of styling instead of cornering. In all truth, even though rice and ricer are used more than ever, it's so overused to the point it's become more tongue in cheek. It's kinda like how otaku used to be an insult towards anime fans, then they embraced it. And then we invented Weeaboo, but then they embraced that too. And now we just kind of gave up on making fun of them, because to be fair, the only one who can hate anime fans more than them is, well, themselves. So it's at the point that, like, we just don't even bother with that self-deprecation, because they're going to outdo our insults no matter what. The point that I'm trying to make is Rice has gotten to that same level. I see a lot of young car enthusiasts just outright call their own car Rice by even putting stickers on it, poking fun at it. And modern Stance Nation bros especially will love putting stickers that declare, keep on hatin', and they'll plaster it on their quarter windows as representation of the fact that they just really don't care. The counterculture meta of today is far stronger than the past thanks to the advent of the internet. We live in a day and age where people self-deprecate themselves so often that, with enough time, a painful insult is just gonna end up becoming a tongue-in-cheek joke. Rice today now stands with its newest definition being really immature car enthusiasts, and that more than anything is probably the most perfect and harmless definition so far. Bonus entry. So this isn't really a term car guys say or are even aware of, nor is it outdated, but I figured I may as well mention it here due to topical similarities. Boy racer, which is basically girls way of insulting people who have racer cars. They call cheap economy cars of excessive paint jobs, ramps, bright wheels, and massive aero boy racers as a joking way to tease them for being wannabe race car driver tryhards. And the only reason I heard of this term is because strangely enough, a lot of white moms always comment on my Corvette and compliment it. It's so luxury, it's so elegant, it's so sexy, nothing like those boy racers and Hondas. I'm just out here like, damn Karen, some of my best friends are in them Hondas. So while most females, or really non-car people of any gender for that matter, may not outright say ricer, they're certainly aware of what they look like, so they've already invented different terms for them. But if you happen to be someone part of the general public watching and always see these cars fly by and are calling them something else or don't know what to call them, congratulations, now you do. Hoopty. Nowadays we call them hoovies. In all seriousness, this term used to be really popular in the 1950s, and it stayed in popularity for the next coming decades as it was commonly used to refer to old, beaten, junky cars. Nowadays, get this, we just cut out all the arbitration and just straight up call them old, beaten cars, aka beaters. Standard. Whenever people say standard, do you drive a standard, they usually are referring to manuals or stick shifts, but the problem with manuals is it's such a massive umbrella term these days that like, cause there's just so many types of different transmissions and only like 3% of the population even knows what you're going to talk about if you do say standard transmission. And by 3%, I don't mean the general population. I even mean like of car guys, because a lot of people just don't really drive standard transmissions or if they do, they'll call them manual or stick shift. And it's very rare to hear someone call them standards as often as they did in the past. And old video games especially, you'll see them say ST and AT instead of nowadays we know it as MT and AT whenever you select the option. So kind of a cool neat touch. Unless of course you live in Europe or India, in which case, viva la manual. Wind it up, feller. Nowadays, we just say roll it up. Whenever we want a passenger to roll their window up, or heck, we just do it for them most of the time since most cars nowadays give drivers electronic controls to everyone's windows. Such a task wasn't possible in older vehicles as unless you had arms as long as Slenderman, there's no way you're reaching all the way back to your passenger seat window to wind them up manually. If you ever sat in the backseat of old 70s and 80s cars, you'll remember the times when your parents would shout at you to wind up the windows, boy! And this term is the same with hot rods in the sense that it's not uncool to say this term. In fact, it's still perfectly viable. The only reason it became outdated especially is just because there aren't really many cars that use them. Hence, there's less chance to even use the term. If we're not given the opportunity to say the term as much, then the term itself will slowly fade out of relevancy, even if the term is still very viable and correct in its definition.
A lot of cars these days, even base model entry level vehicles, will include electronic windows. So that's part of the reason why we're kind of forgetting this is even a thing. Cigarette lighter. Okay, this is one I'm still guilty of saying and probably one I will probably continue to say until the day I die and I don't even smoke cigarettes. Alright, so being 44 doesn't feel too old until you realize the world itself constantly reminds you of it. Nowadays, people just call the DC 12 volt sockets and cars phone charger adapters. That's honestly just the best use of them in today's era. People will usually already have a phone charger USB adapter plugged into it the day they buy the car. Heck, most dealerships will even sell sell one to you for like $12 right after the transaction is over. Listening to music or using GPS is so prominent these days, especially with the widespread availability of Bluetooth, unless you have a slow, outdated, overpriced Maserati, <laughs> losers. So people usually want to be able to charge their phone to prevent any battery life worries. All right, here's a short rant. Before we jump into the final entry, here's something I just gotta mention while we're on the topic of old car terms and old car technology. So most modern cars don't feature CD players anymore, right? So in my video, Five Cheap Things Expensive Cars Do, I cheekily made fun of a $500,000 Lamborghini Aventador Super Veloce for not having Bluetooth, despite the base model 2012 Aventador having Bluetooth. And instead, the Super Veloce comes with a CD player. And the amount of wannabe nostalgia hipsters I had comment, I still use my CD player, how dare you insult the sanctity of my quirky uniqueness for using an old item. Everyone, look at how quirky and unique I am, give me attention. Look, to all those people, you missed the entire point of that post. The Aventador Super Veloce is a balls to the wall, high performance track demon that features skateboard grip tape instead of leather floor mats just to save approximately four pounds. If they were that intent on saving four pounds from skateboard grip tape instead of leather, you would think they wouldn't even bother to include a CD player. I'm not saying it's unacceptable to still use one. You still can. So to everyone who kept commenting, if I had a Lambo, I would still use it. No, you probably wouldn't because if you have a Lambo like that, I hope you're using it for the track built purpose. You want to listen to music? Go buy the base model of Ventador. Because what's really funny is when you look at cars like the Chevy Camaro Z28s, which are a fraction of the price, they don't even have AC systems in them just to save weight. And it's strange seeing an affordable American muscle car commit to this weight reduction far better than this half million exotic, which just includes a very trivial addition, again, for a car that's trying to be balls to the wall. Why does it even bother having any audio system was the point I was trying to make. Again, I don't care if you still use a CD player, that's not what I was asking. And besides, even if you were, guess what? Cassette users have entered the chat, baby! You think CD players are all hipster and cool? In the same way the Super Veloce didn't fully commit to the act of weight reduction, y'all aren't even fully committing to the act of being a hipster. Get on real hipsters levels. Go out, bust out an actual mixtape and throw it into the cassette player. Now that's nostalgia. Better yet, get a trombone and just play music while the car is driving. That's how old people really really listen to music back in the old days in their vehicles. Yeah, y'all wouldn't understand. All right, now that I got that rant out of my system, let's move on to the extremely underwhelming file entry that I just made you wait for. Automobilist. Yep. That's it, fellas. Do I really have to I'm going to talk about it. I know I don't have to, but okay, this is a term that used to describe people who liked automobiles. Hence, automobilist. This term is just old-fashioned due to the fact that people don't really say automobiles that often. We just say cars, which is a shortening of the word carriage. Hence, the modern variance of the word is car enthusiast or car guy. Anyways, that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching and go check out my other videos. Heck, go wage war on all the hipsters in that video I mentioned earlier if you want. I'll link it everything somewhere. Bye-bye now.